Hey there everyone and welcome to the best skill runes for Archer. This is a continuation of my series where I've gone through all the different skills on the class. I then did a long presentation where I talked about creating builds and the damage output, how you get defense, and now finally we've got to the presentation talking about all the skill runes. So if you're watching this at a much later date, there may be an updated version of this. Do check out my channel for that. I plan to redo this video if enough significant skill runes have come out that it's really changed things and there's enough to talk about. Um, but if you're here at the right time, um, as it's come out, then you're in the right place. Um, if you've seen my wizard version of this video, then it's going to be a very similar format, where I'm going to be doing a presentation, it's going to be very long, well I'm saying that because I'm recording it right now, but obviously you know because you clicked on the video, but uh, there'll, be, there'll be links in the description which you can use to skip to particular points if you want to refer to them later, otherwise just skip through this video. But I do plan, um, I do recommend watching this whole thing because there's a lot of useful information in it. Anyway, let's get stuck into the video. Something which a lot of people ask me, and especially new players, is talking about the gold find skill runes. Everyone wants to know where you can pick these up, where you can increase your gold find. It's an important stat that every uh, every player in the game needs, but also new players need to focus on it a lot more. So there's actually a very useful forum thread which um, I'm going to click to now. It's called Gold Find Skill Runes. This is on the uh, the Kings Road forums here, and the second post in this thread is me detailing all the information uh, about the gold find screens. I'm going to keep this up to date as more gold find screens come out into the game and I break it down for wizard and then I just basically say it's the it's the same for the others. So effectively what this is is the first screen listed here can be obtained by everyone in the game. The other ones all released in festivals where they were just released in that one festival, that's the one chance to get it, and every time they brought out a new Skurin, uh, Goldvine Skurin that is, they've brought out a different Goldvine Skurin. I feel like they're probably going to repeat this process if they do bring out more Goldvine Skurins, they're not going to repeat ones they've already brought out, because the idea is um, it's something which everyone can get to improve their gold find, even if they have the old ones. But yeah, don't need to stress over it too much because, to be honest, there's loads of access to gold find across the game and all different types of jewels and stuff, so it's not like you're missing out on anything. And in fact, when these screens came out, the people who were playing back then didn't have such great access to gold find, so you know, you're really not at a disadvantage. The important thing to take here is this first screen. Um, we can have a look at how to get that. So, uh, this is what I detail here just uh, in this presentation if you've been reading this. Uh, that's the one you can get. All the others are from festivals. So I'm going to show you how to get it because it's not actually that obvious in the game. Basically there's this screw in called Light, Con uh, Light Concussive Arrow. It doesn't show any gold find on it. You can pick this up very easily from dungeons, event vault, just basically those uh, rune fragment boxes. It's one of the things that you can pick up there. It doesn't show the um, gold find on it. However, if you level it up to maximum, you can then evolve it into the version which has gold find on it. So it doesn't actually take much to level up. I'm just going to level up with gems here because this is my test account. So uh, we'll just work this one through. So evolving it to superior, it doesn't have any gold find on it uh, yet. I'll evolve it to um, epic now. Still doesn't have any gold find on it. Then I'm going to take it to legendary and it still doesn't have any gold find on it. I'm then going to level it up and then now you'll see it's possible to evolve it from this legendary max level jewel uh, sorry, skill rune into a base level skill rune which is the greater light concussive arrow. So this is how you get the greater version of this. Um, it's a little bit confusing with some of the other skill runes because there's like greater stone bear which is another gold find skill rune however you can't evolve the stone bear into greater stone bear um, this was actually something that was classified as Skurun Legendary Evolution, and it was something which they wanted to bring into the game, but it's just a bit confusing and you can't really see all the details here, because if you look at the base damage on the Light Concussive Arrow here, it's not maxed out. That's meant to be one of the kind of identifiers that it can be evolved, but then, you know, it doesn't really identify that properly because you can't see that. You don't know what you're going to get until you level the rune up to max, all that kind of stuff. So they just didn't continue with it. However, it's still in the game, and this is the, the only one which you actually need to worry about because it gives you the gold find. It's very good for that. Um, so anyway, you can evolve that here, and then it turns into the, um, uh, the version with gold find on it. It actually gets most of the gold find in legendary quality, and it takes a lot to level up. So for new players, it's not necessarily what you want to uh, what you want to level up to begin with, because it costs so much to do. Um, 
Oh, I actually ran out of gold. Whoa. Okay. I need to add more gold onto my account. Oh, well. Um, so, yes, this, as you can see, gets to epic quality. It's still only 25% out of the 75%. You can see how much it takes to level there as well. 22,000. So, that brings me quite nicely onto the next section of this video, which is going to be talking about the experience requirements. So, to see the experience requirements, I've got a guide on the forum which I will admit now, this is my Scaroons guide and it is completely unfinished. It was a very ambitious project that ultimately is very outdated. Do not go read the other pages of this thread. However, the first page has a lot of useful information, uh, just numbers and stuff. And it's in fact where I'm gonna link this video and the other Scaroons videos for the other classes. But anyway, so looking here at the level requirements, this details different types of, um, of Scaroons. I've kind of classified them to say which category they're under, how much experience they take to level up, that kind of thing. And I haven't actually got all the details here of all the different categories, but it's got most of them. Most of the screens which you're leveling up are category D or category E, meaning they take 173,000 experience or 260,000. Now, the gold find screen, first of all, it's a category B one, and then it becomes a category C one. So in total, to get those 75% gold find, you need to put 460,000 uh, experience into it, which is nearly triple what a normal screen is. So just something to bear in mind, um, it's completely down to you. I'm not going to recommend whether or not you do the Goldfine screen first or you do other ones and then come to it later, you know, if you're a new player. But um, it is something to bear in mind that it takes a lot of experience to do. And I would say in general, it depends how much you play, but each screen, 173,000 173, experience, takes roughly one month to do. So you can expect to do a screen once per month. If you're not playing every day and not, you know, putting time in, then it'll take a bit more than a month. If you're playing a few hours every day, then it's going to take less than a month. Uh, but roughly one month, I would say, per screen. So the gold find screen will take maybe three months to do and uh, before you can get to other stuff. So no, just something to bear in mind, a bit of numbers there for you if you want to kind of like work out how you're doing and all that kind of stuff. This A1 here, this is um, the screens which take 10 levels. You've got um, they they vary a bit. So there's 270,000, there's 180,000, and there's 360,000. So some of those are very expensive too. Uh, just bear in mind. Uh, but anyway, so now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about elements because this is another thing which I get asked quite a bit. Um, people starting the game, they want to know kind of what elements are good. It's all a lot to take in. There's so many screens in the game. You don't really know where to go. You've got to make your build. Now I will say at this particular point in the game. Um, they aren't really giving good access to other elements. You can only get the fire tri stones and the shadow tri stones from the shop, and then there's like nature spheres which you can get in festivals if you spend quite a bit of money. So um, there isn't great access. You can't. You don't really get much choice. However, assuming you had any choice, this is what I would recommend. So for archer, uh, quite simply put, it's either fire or water. All the other elements are missing stuff. They're not. They can't really do stuff. In fact, it's mostly down to the barbed arrow screens. Basically, the fire one and the water one for barbed arrows are so much stronger than everything else, and uh, the other screens on that, as well as just generally, turns the skill into the most important damage leader on the class. Now, if you watched my previous video, um, I did meant, uh, talk about the damage and stuff, uh, how that all comes together, so you should be aware of why that is. Um, basically, yeah, fire or water, you've got to pick one of the uh, one of the two uh, to be optimum currently with Archer. That's what I recommend. And unlike the other classes where other elements can be really good at like filling and the gaps and stuff, on Archer if you pick fire or water it pretty much covers your all your bases. You don't really need anything else uh, there and you actually fire plus water if you know went with both it wouldn't really do much for you again. You just need one or the other. So the next bit of this video is going to be going through um, each of the skills and talking about the skill rooms for them. This is going to be a table um, well, as you can see on your screens right now, this is one big table that uh, is a lot of information to to really <laughs> read, but um, I'm going to take you through it and talk about what you're looking at, uh, how to read this. Uh, I'm actually going to do more of this showing screens in-game. Here, I'm not going to go through each skill uh, by, skill by skill. I'm just going to tell you how to read this, because this really has all the information which you'd want to know. It's the great place to come back and refer to once you've watched this video and the later stuff is and talking more about uh, what these screens do and stuff uh, because these are just the names here you, you may not know what these screens do so how to read this 
for starters, I've got all the skills listed. You can see I've done them in order, so it's volley, spread shot, arcane arrow, goes all the way to first aid. I'm not including the um, the secret, sorry, not secret skills, advanced skills, uh, apart from first aid, because the scorings for them haven't really been fleshed out. They just aren't good scorings for them yet, so there's not a whole lot of point going through them. However, first aid, I wouldn't be doing you justice if I didn't include that, because Shroud Guard is an incredible scurin and makes this a very viable skill, so you know, need to need to kind of put a little bit of focus on that. So anyway, it goes through all the different skills there, you can see them named, and then the next line is talking about the best scurin. So that's talking about each skill, um, which scurins that would be overall the best. Um, you can see for certain ones I've identified there's uh, Dark Mist best for PvE and then Renewal Mist best for PvP. Um, other ones I've listed a few of them, so here we've got Water Volley, Primal Volley and Radiant Volley. That's because they're practically identical on the stats and what they do, it's just which element you've got um, in your build, uh, that's the one which will be best. So they're kind of joint best there. Um, some of these have a star next to them, now that, uh, or an asterisk, that is to identify that you don't have to have that particular element in order for this Skurun to function. So um, I should actually have a star next to these guys. Um, I'll just put that in there now. Well, anyway, there's a, there's going to be a star there. Um, I can't type right now because I've got my microphone on my desk. Okay, so um, these stars mean that, um, say for example, static feel. This is a nature screen. It does nature damage. However, it doesn't matter about the nature damage because actually it's all about the rooting effect. And so you could, you know, use it with whatever build you like, and it will still function very well. Um, however, in the case of static field, it does actually do some nature damage, and if you do have a high nature stat, it will actually be significant. Um, so, you know. Each screw in by itself, but uh, there are certain ones which are definitely doesn't matter about the element there. Um, you can just oh, I didn't do a good job here. Whoops, I'm reading this now and uh, never noticed that before that I hadn't added in a couple of them. Um, Shroud guard to oh. okay, there we go. So those ones I just need to check now to make sure I didn't miss any other ones. Um, no, okay. Cool, that, that looks good. So those are the those are the star ones. Um, next we have the elements. Now this is simply talking about the damage. It's not talking about extra effects which the screens do. This is talking about which elements this skill can do with um, viable damage. So for example with Volley here, we've got uh, Water, Primal and Radiant. That's the Water, the Nature and the Light element. Um, so those are the three best screens. However, there's also a viable fire element option. So if you're running a fire build, then your fire one, may, uh, your fire screen may be stronger than the other three. So, you know, you can consider that for uh, that element. Um, looking through, uh, there's another one here. There's a nature screen, which is not not the best, but if you've got a nature build, then it's it's worthwhile. Uh, similar kind of stuff for rain of arrows, uh, rain of arrows here. And then looking through, I think that's pretty much it. Uh, looking through them, other ones being identified by that. Um, and then the next section is others. So this is identifying other scurins which you don't want to use them for damage, they're not the best scurin for that skill, however they do something which is useful that maybe you want to have that scurin uh, for that use. So I'm going to go through each one of these in turn, uh, but first, just before that I want to say what this is doing between these three categories, the best, the elements, and then the others, is it's identifying every single Skurin on Archer worthy of any note at all. So the best one is kind of what you want to get and then you want to use most, most of the time. Then elements is where, okay, if you want to have elemental damage of that type, then this skill can be used for that, and there's a viable Skurin which can do that elemental type of elemental damage. And then others are the, the other ones you want to pick up for the particular reasons. Some of them are missable, some of them are, uh, are really quite handy. So let's go through them now. Um, well, yes, yeah, just to add to that, so if any Skurin is not identified here, say there's like a fire Skurin for uh, Arcane Arrow, because it's not Static Field and because it's not listed here, it's not listed under others either, there is absolutely no point you paying that any note. This identifies all the all the Skurins worthy of note. So just clarify that. Right, so let's go through the others. Forest Spread Shot here, this is for farming. So this skill by itself, it just doesn't have any Skurins that make it viable. Uh, Arches, as I went through in the builds video, it's all about doing the basic attacks for your damage output, and any time you use a skill, it's slowing down your damage per second. So unless it, a skill does something very cool or useful, 
it's not going to be viable. And Spreadshot's exactly that. It, basically, it's your farming skill. So Forest Spreadshot is the better version, uh, the best one for farming. I don't think you actually need to level it up. Um, the reason why you want it for farming is for the nature charges, which is for this uh, forest bomb over here, which I haven't identified as under others because it's actually a good score in, by its, uh, in its own right. But the forest spread shot turns the forest bomb into a huge explosion, which can be really useful in farming. And so if you're using this already as you are in farming, then having forest bomb as well as a big air effect explosion is very useful for, um, for that. So decoy, here we've got water or shadow illusion, they're both practically the same, doesn't matter about the damage at all, they just, they don't do any damage. It's all about the healing you and, and allies, and slowing the enemies um, when it dies. So that's a kind of useful effect, if you're going to be using it in PvP, it's probably the more useful effect, uh, better than Fester Spirit. Um, it's just, yeah, a handy little extra effect that um, you might want to have. Uh, it's one of the ones which you could miss. Then Concussive Arrow, you've got Dark Arrow here for an area of stun. So this skill normally just stuns the target it hits, just a single target. And then some of the screens add area damage and stuff. Dark Arrow adds an area stun. Uh, the damage to, in the area is very small, but it, it stuns everything it hits. So that can be used for stunning a group of enemies. Not incredibly useful uh, compared to what you have going on the, on the class. You can do stronger other things, but Dark Arrow is there, identified as an area stun. You then got the Gold Find screen, which we talked about earlier. And then looking at Smoke Screen. Um, so I'll be going to, into this in a lot more detail later on, but Lingering Smoke is like an alternate version of, um, alternative version to Renewing Mist, where instead of the healing you, it deals damage to enemies. That damage is not huge, but it's significant enough that you can, you know, I have listed it here as a source of fire damage. Um, it's quite good, and it's got the slow on it, so it's a scurrying worthy of note, uh, but, you know, maybe one that you'll miss. Other than that, we've only got two others uh, to talk through. Dark Companion here. This um, is basically a PvP version of this skill. Uh, you wouldn't want to use Stone Bear in PvP, that's just useless. But Dark Companion is going to um, heal you as it hits enemies. A little bit of healing can be quite useful as an extra little buff if you want that. That's, uh, that's a score in there. And then, similarly, another PvP score in here, Frost Turret. So this um, Ballista is useless in PvP because pet damage is just minuscule in there, it doesn't do anything. So Frost Turret is the PvP version where it won't be doing any damage, but it will slow the target it hits. And since you can place this over walls and that kind of stuff, it lasts for 10 seconds. It actually almost stops wizards from teleporting because each hit from the blister uh, cancels the wizard's teleport. I know that because I play wizard myself, and it's very irritating. So um, yeah, it has some PvP uses, that's the screen for that there and I believe you might need to level it up for the um, the proper slow effect uh, to be stronger, I can't remember exactly. But anyway, so that's those are the others. I've explained how to read this, I hope that's all clear enough, and you can use this to refer to. I'm now going to go and show them in game, because that is a little bit more exciting. Um, so let's have a look at each skill in turn, and talk about the best. So on Primal Volley, oh sorry, on Volley here, um, Primal Volley, Radiant Volley, and Water Volley were the ones which we identified. Um, you can see here the damage number is almost identical. The main thing here is that they attack at a faster rate, 20% faster rate. As I mentioned just a little bit earlier, because most of your damage output is coming from your basic attacks, any time you use a skill, it's going to be lowering your damage per second while stopping you from doing that normal damage. So when you use Volley, Volley is all about the damage. So if you want it to add to your damage per second, well, it's got to do its animation quickly. So doing that is um, very preferable. And then also Impaired Rapid Fire is just a little bit lower on the damage end as well. So it's definitely worse, but it's perfectly viable. It works. If you're a fire build, it's very good. Um, it's a nice little chunk of chunk of thing there. Pretty simple on those screens though. Next we have Spread Shot. Now I already identified, if you look at uh, Spreading Flames here, the damage on it is just not that high. I mean, you can use the skill really frequently, but considering you're going to be doing so much damage from your basic attacks, it's just not worthwhile for the damage. And some of these things, they do a little bit of stun, a little bit of knockback, but nothing's that strong. Reason being um, is the cooldown's just so low on this skill that they can't really add any crazy effect onto it. Otherwise, it would just become overpowered. So anyway, Forest Spread Shot is the one to do here. It gives you nature charges. The damage, not significant. It's just for farming. And then we move on to Arcane Arrow. So Arcane Arrow, uh, the one really worthy of note is the Static Field. I've already mentioned um, that it's the rooting effect. This does a slow effect as well, and 
it, the combination of slow plus root on anyone trying to uh, trying to move. So I'm thinking PvP mainly here. This isn't really PVE. This is definitely more PvP where you use it on wizards and knights and they really struggle to move. If they try and teleport or charge, they're going to go flying in crazy directions and not have control, proper control of their character. And that is just a brilliant score for doing that. Um, you really uh, control the field a lot with that by spamming it. Now because you're spamming it so much, that does hamper your damage per second, which is a bit annoying, but that's pretty much what you want to do when you're fighting wizards and knights uh, to control their movement um, in PvP. And because you're spamming it so much, having that nature damage on it, it is significant because if you have a good nature stat using this so much, you are going to be doing more damage. Now look at the other Skurins, uh, they do some you know, reasonably interesting things, they try to make this one exciting. This is the most recent one, Frostbite, and you can see the damage is higher. Um, it also gives you an increased move speed and attack boost um, for the next few seconds after you use it, which is cool but it's not significant enough. If it was like a big buff, then maybe it'd be worth considering, but the rooting is so good that it's just the reason why you'd use this skill. So Static Field there um, is the definite standout, and none of the others really stand out as doing too much. Again, the skill has a bit of a problem with the cooldown is so low, being only three seconds, that they can't really add much onto it that's overpowered because it would then just be overpowered. The next skill to look at is Decoy, so Festive Spirit is a big standout here again. This uh, does some really cool stuff, so I'll try to, my best to explain. Basically it creates, rather than creating the decoy flat out, it creates a present on the ground which pulls enemies towards it and slows them, so they struggle to then run away from that present, and then a couple of seconds later, a couple being literally two, then the decoy appears and the enemies will then turn around and start attacking it. Um, it also does a bit of damage to them, which is surprisingly high for this skill. However, because you're not spamming this skill too much, um, you know, it's not like it's got a three second cooldown, you're not going to be doing a huge amount of light damage. But it's, you know, it's there. And the reason why you want to level this up as well is you need to level it up for the slow um, to be a little stronger, uh, sorry, last a longer time, which helps with the just general functioning of this because the pull, well, the pull effect is really good if they're not being necessarily slowed. I mean, it's, it's very minor difference, to be honest, but if they're not being slowed, then they can run away from the decoy and start attacking you rather than the decoy when it appears. But anyway, that's what's cool about this, Skurin, uh, is the pull effect and the fact that... Um, you can override the stack limit. So normally with decoy, when you place a decoy, then when you place a new one, the old one disappears. With Festive Spirit, that doesn't happen. So if you've got a cooldown potion active, then you can put loads of decoys out, and it becomes a bit crazy. The enemies just can't get past you. So it's great PvE skill, um, what skill in, sorry, and makes it good for that. Now the other ones, there's a couple which do damage, like this Thunder Guardian and Empowered Fire Trap. They're not really worthy of note. They just don't do much damage. I mean, this isn't meant to be a damage skill. It's a defense skill, so it's not no surprise, really. Then you've got Shadow Illusion, and Water Illusion is practically the same, where when the thing dies, it heals you. I talked about this a little bit earlier on. Quite a handy extra kind of PvP skill, but um, it's not not huge. Um, it's just, you know, if you want to use this skill in PvP, um, then that's probably the one to go for. And, uh, yeah, it can be, can be quite handy. Next thing to talk about is, uh, next skill to talk about, sorry, Strapnel Arrow. So here we have the best one being Split Fire, however it's joint best with Empowered Shattering Shot. They do a little bit different damage. Split Fire does a little bit more, but ultimately they're pretty much the same. They do uh, an explosion hitting some enemies for that much damage. It's fairly significant. This skill is meant to be a damage skill. It's just a little bit um, overshadowed by the basic attack build, but... Um, if you're going to be using this skill, then these are the best screens for it, either fire or water here. And um, you can see the fragments bursting out in each direction and stuff. Uh, that's a bit iffy. <laughs> like, the, these little balls fly out and hit things, but they're not really that important. They do a bit of extra damage, but it's they appear quite far out. So if you hit a group of enemies, you'll hit the group with the explosion, and then they won't. the balls will kind of fly out in random directions and not hit them. So, um, yeah, it's basically that initial damage. That's what you're looking at there. Stone Arrow here, it does a little bit um, little bit more. Uh, sorry, a little bit less damage. Uh, that's why it's noted down as the source of nature damage. Um, if you're looking for sources of nature damage on the class, this is definitely one way you can 
uh, you can get some nature to hit in, a, in an area on some enemies but um, it's not anything significant uh, well it's not particularly significant and the enemies taking additional 10% damage over time do not get confused by that that is uh, what the base skill has which is they take some damage and then they take 10% damage um, as a damage over time um, over like three seconds or something like that so um, yeah don't don't get confused by that it doesn't increase the damage you deal to enemies um, the next one to look at, look at is concussive arrow so we identified here um, infinite combustion and forest bomb as the best two so these do almost identical damage but the way they work is slightly different so I'm going to explain each one infinite combustion you hit the enemy a uh, single target and do um, some 120, uh, 152% fire damage to them uh, it stuns the enemy that's the main use of the skill it's a stun skill and in PvP especially that's useful that's where you want to use it is a ranged stun skill uh, for other people um, other you know opponents and also does some quite decent elemental damage on it so this one's 152% fire and then it'll explode and do a bit of fire damage to uh, themselves and all enemies nearby pretty decent forest bomb is a similar kind of thing dealing us uh, doing the stun and doing the 152 percent does 15,000 straight up um, but nothing more and then if you've done the nature charges that is using the forest spread shot then it makes it of effect and it then does up to a really big uh, explosion and also yeah so if you do all three nature charges then it also slows them and um, does more damage it does the 30,000 rather than 15,000 of the nature in reality uh, if you're using this you, as a stun skill you're probably using it in PvP you're not going to be using forest spread shot so those charges don't really matter but the base skill you can see ultimately about the same infinite combustion just does a bit more uh, because it does that as a damage over time so anyway that's what it's doing it's a stun skill with some uh, elemental damage on it dark arrow is just a bit weaker really uh, that's 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 basically the what it's doing there it's just a bit weaker on the elemental stat but perfectly viable next one to look at is rain of arrows now this skill is it's an area of effect crowd control it fears a group of enemies uh, or stuns them I, can't, I can never remember and um, uh, de definitely with certain other skill rings the rain of earth rain of light it stuns the uh, stuns the enemies I think anyway it um, hits a group of enemies and then gets them to run away from you or stuck in place basically not coming over to attack you now it's a useful skill in PvE and if we just look at rain of earth and rain of light here you can see the damage is is fine but nothing that special uh, with the previous skills we we're just looking at it's like roughly in the same kind of area except you've got a longer cooldown here um, so it's not really going to be something you're using for elemental damage it's just for controlling things and Reign of Horror I believe does that way better than the other things uh, way better than the other skill runes reason being is it puts a slow on the enemies which stays forever so I can't remember what percentage it is I don't think I've ever worked it out it's like 30-40% something in that kind of region of a slow uh, to their movement and it stays forever which goes a bit crazy on certain bosses so most bosses are immune to slow and most bosses have range attacks so it doesn't really affect those guys however some bosses are weak to slow and they want to get into melee range and using rain of horror on them kinda cheeses the whole thing uh, additionally just controlling small enemies making them slowed means they're gonna really struggle to get to you and then um, the other thing is when you're using it with decoy specifically um, festive spirit I really like the combination of festive spirit and reign of horror you can pull the enemies together they're slowed from that you reign of horror them they're slowed even more and they're going to be trying to run away from the festive spirit however you can keep placing more festive spirits which pulls them together and they basically get stuck on the spot not knowing where to run and now the running away gets a bit annoying because um, you want the enemies to be grouped together so that you can kill them all quickly however I find that in practice using the two of them while it's not the fastest way to take them out it's a very reliable way of taking out lots of enemies and so I find this best in PvE but some people do like the other screw for PvE for PvP this is definitely the most obvious choice the silencing um, breaks through everything you can't get immunity to silence and so you can use silence uh, this as a silence skill to 
to disable people. So between Reign of Horror and then also this Infant Combustion or you know whatever score you know, you're using on here for a stun, you've got both a stun and a silence that you can kind of chain together to disable someone for a long period of time. So that's where it comes in use there. It's a clear, clear standout choice uh, for PvP, uh, this scoring on, on the skill. Next we have Smokescreen. So this is one which is a little bit more complicated. Um, I've talked about this skill in great detail in previous videos, so um, if you have any confusion on the skill itself then go watch those. But I'm just going to talk about Scroons here. So Dark Mist is the first one, and I'm actually going to show this in town right now, because what this does um, is not very clear on the Skurun. The 50% damage reduction is the crazy buff here. And then the other thing is that it fears enemies for 4 seconds uh, that get near to you. Now, this creates an area here. You can see this. When you're stood in it, you get a 50% damage reduction, which means you're going to tank really quite nicely. Um, combine that with any healing, which we'll get into later on first aid, then you can tank very nicely uh, with Archer. But the crazy thing is that um, where you run, there's an area around you which enemies will get feared. So you can see these things getting hit here. It's not doing any damage because it's just a fear effect. It happens very frequently, and what this means is that when you use the Dark dark Mist, you don't even need to stand in it, you can just run near to um, any small enemies and they'll run away from you. Uh, very useful against all the small melee enemies because while it's active, they literally won't hit you. And you can see with a, with a cooldown potion here, I can have it active almost constantly. So all the small ele melee enemies are just not a problem at all, they're not going to be hurting you at all. The small range enemies, uh, where you're either taking half damage from them, or you can just, you know, be controlling them with other skills like maybe Reign of Horror, which can fear those, or you know, a decoy that can distract them. Combine all this stuff together, you've got great defense going on. And um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Talking about Dark Mist, really, it's just an insane PVE skill rune, and uh, way better than the others. Then we come to Renew Mist. Now, Renew Mist does not have the damage reduction. However, in PvP, all versions of the skill have damage reduction. So the difference between Dark Mist and the other ones isn't quite so significant. Dark Mist still has the 50% damage reduction, but with the others having 25%, it's not doing a whole lot more. And that fear effect isn't going to be very useful. It's a stun in PvP, and um, you know it's fine, but I think it's just like a one second stun, or something like that. Yeah, one second stun. So it's not really that worth it. And you may as well go with one of the other options, uh, like Renewing Mist here, which um, does an 80% slow on anything entering. This is a very strong effect for all knights and wizards trying to teleport or charge next to you. They're going to have a hard time when they go into that slow. Combine this with Static Field, where you've got the slow from that and the rooting, well, they're going to have a really hard time getting to you. And on top of that, you've got the 25% damage reduction. you also got a little bit of healing going on um, from Renewing Mist. That's uh, that's where this screen becomes really strong. So this is the PvP screen, very handy, and um, I've made lots of arguments in cases between Dark Mist and Renewing Mist and PvP. I do think the slow from Renewing Mist is what uh, Renewing Mist is what clinches it. It's just stronger there. Lingering Smoke, we gave that little special mention. This has the slow too. It's a 75% rather than 80%. Not really a significant difference, and it does a bit of damage. Now the thing to note about Lingering Smoke is if you look at f Freezing Mist here. That does 11,500 water damage. Lingering Smoke does 18,000. Doesn't well, it is quite a bit more. But the point is, this freezing mist doesn't um, actually crit. So that 11,500 is a static 11,500, whereas the lingering smoke, that 18,000 will crit. So it will do way more damage than 18,000. So that's the um, the important bit to note there. So it does actually do reasonable damage. Um, it's and like I said, it's basically damage rather than the healing. But ultimately, I'd say the healing is more important when it comes to PvP um, because you want to use this skill more as tanking than letting the enemies get into it to get hurt. Um, but anyway, moving on. Next skill to talk about is Pierce. Uh, these screens, um, if you look at Piercing Eyes, Piercing Light, but look at the damage numbers on them, Piercing Darkness as well, almost identical. It's every fifth hit you put a damage over time on enemies, just basically increases your damage by adding some elemental damage onto uh, your basic attacks. Um, it's very, very useful Skurun, um, does quite a lot of damage actually, it's surprising how much damage this does, um, as long as you can keep up the basic attacks, and uh, it's a big reason why the basic attack build uh, works nicely. 
uh, why is that a big reason? There are other bigger reasons, but it's one of the one of the good reasons uh, why it why it's very consistent. So you go with the element which your build is, or whichever one is good for the content. All three screens, I would recommend getting all three up. Uh, so you can kind of change depending on the content. Granite Spike has a knockback on it, which is actually very, very annoying because it happens every fifth hit, and you end up knocking back the enemy out of range, so you just chase after the enemy, and you end up running into all the all the other enemies, the ones you're maybe not attacking, um, and yeah, it just causes you a lot of problems. So Granite Spike, you, you almost don't want to use because it's just going to cause you more problems than good. Uh, but anyway, the other three are all awesome. Moving on to Sniper here, we've got Ice Blasting Shot and Empower Blasting Shot. These two are almost identical. The Water one does like a notable amount more damage. Uh, it's definitely definitely doing more damage, um, but they do the same effect, which is there's a small chance to cause an explosion in an area which does that damage and knocks back those enemies. Now, compared to Granite Spike, which I just spoke about, this knockback is not a problem because it's not happening every fifth hit. It's happening like rather infrequently. And um, to be honest, most bosses are immune to knockback and stuff, so it doesn't really do anything to them. So you're you're mostly good. Like this screen, it's not a problem. That knockback is almost helpful because um, having an occasional knockback is actually quite useful. So these screens both very good. Um, I tested deadly long shot uh, a great deal before making this video. Deadly long shot is a little different because it does damage over time rather than a single explosion. And testing the damage numbers. Uh, basically the problem is that the percentage damage on deadly long shot is quite a bit lower than ice blasting shot so even though it does activate a little bit more frequently I, I think it was like 30 to 50 percent more um, or something like that it, it, it activates more frequently but the damage from it is less and damage over time is just generally a bit less good because even when it does trigger it takes a few seconds to actually do all the damage and you know it's just just not so great so it's fine if you've got a nature build deadly long shots definitely useful but ultimately the fire and the water screens here are the better options and another thing to note last thing to note on this is that in pvp every fifth basic attack you do on an enemy stuns them for 1.5 seconds 1.5 seconds isn't the most isn't the best stun you want to stun for like two or more seconds but even so, just having it on your basic attacks, having those occasional stuns just when you're attacking someone is actually very useful. Uh, it's a nice little addition to why you'd already be using this skill with the skill and, you know, it's handy to have that. Um, next we have Mark of Death. This is again a little bit more complicated and I, um, this is important for anyone who has been playing the game a while because this is noting something that hasn't really been talked about in the community. It's not really very well known. So Mark of Death is your killing a boss or killing a single target it's very good in pve for killing bosses quickly and it's very good in pvp for marking someone and then killing them off quickly before they can really heal and all that kind of stuff so um yeah it's your like heavy damage dealer however the way it works is it incre only increases damage from range so if you're at close range on the target then it's not really doing that um which comes up in pvp because both well, knights want to get close and wizards pretty much always want to get close so if you're fighting them chances are they're going to come next to you and you're not going to get any increased damage from it all you're going to get is say if you look at mark of ignition here getting that extra fire damage on every hit you do to them which that fire damage is is good on every hit you do to them but you know you want the range damage boost too and that's where i'm kind of rounding up to come say how mark of justice works so um just say with the increased damage that works for your whole party, so if you're all stood at range attacking something, you will get the damage boost. However, say there are knights next to the enemy attacking it, they're not going to do increased damage to it. Mark of Justice flips that on its head. It's no longer increased range damage. It says, take 50% increased damage from all attacks. So this means if you're at close range, it still deals increased damage. Now, while it's not really doing uh, any extra damage on each hit, like Mark of Ignition adds loads of fire damage, it is instead doing this extra damage at close range, which in PvE, if you're in a party, works really, really well. And in your PvP, I, I, you know, you'd have to know from your own gameplay experience. I don't do archer in PvP, so I can't say for certain, but I know that a lot of the time archers are having to fight in close range, and you want that damage boost there. It's probably more significant than adding the fire damage from Mark of Ignition. 
Now the other effect is what goes a bit nuts, which it doesn't say on the screen itself, so I'm flicking back and forth a bit. The reason being is I want to show you on the screen it says it heals all players while dealing some nature damage, stunning them for 0.5 seconds. That stun, meh, that's not important. The healing, uh, the dealing 6,000 nature damage, again not important, not really doing that much. Um, it is on every fifth attack, but you know, it's just one hit of nature of 6,000. The healing all players, it doesn't say until you go to the info here. Now. Mark of Hope is an almost identical Skaroon. Um, the numbers are just the same, you know, the description's the same. That goes up to a 20% heal. Mark of Justice goes up to 24% heal. Now, if you think about that, that's actually kind of nuts. Every single, every fifth ha attack you do on an enemy that's marked, you are healing by 24%. In fact, you heal the whole party by 24%. So, not only is this de giving you increased damage at close range as well as range, it's also healing by 24% every 5 attacks. In PvE, if you've got the max attack rate of 6 per second, that's every second you're healing by 24%. That is quite insane healing on a skill that's all about dealing a load of damage. So I'm not going to go on about it loads, but basically Mark of Justice e is kind of awesome. These are the two screens which you'd want to take note of, and I would recommend getting both of them up. Uh, if you've got a heavy fire build, Mark of Ignition is very powerful, and otherwise Mark of Justice um, as you can probably tell from my talking about it there, I think it's really awesome too. It's very strong. Uh, there are a couple of other screens which do things like this Mark of Fear, which does the slow on the enemy and adds a bit of damage onto each attack you do, but the damage is kind of quite a lot less than Mark of Ignition, and the slow effect's just not very useful, so they're not really so worthy of note. It's these two which are the, the big ones. Barbed Arrows here, um, I could go on all day about Barbed Arrows. If you watch my previous videos, you'll know that Barbed Arrows is like the huge damage leader on the class. Um, it does so much damage, and I really need to explain how this works to, to really get to that, because I don't think I did it properly in the previous videos. So the way Barbed Arrows works is once you have it on, your basic attacks have this buff, and it's just constant buff. It costs a bit of mana each attack, but you know we're not going to go into that. What we are going to go into is that you do an attack on an enemy and then it puts a damage over time which hits three times, once per second for three seconds. It does 25% um, each time. You can stack that up to three times. So if you're attacking an enemy, um, then basically they're going to take an extra 75% damage each second. That's the way it works. Now, adding the screens in, let's say we look at uh, Thor's arrow for a second. What Thor's arrows will do is that um, as well as that 25%, they also take some extra nature damage. Um, so if you're attacking them constantly and you have the three stacks on them, then they'll be taking 75% uh, base damage plus three times this nature damage uh, each second. Which is quite reasonable, you know, it's good. It's a big buff to the skill, it means it does good damage and stuff. However, where it goes crazy is on both sc Scorching Arrows and Chilling Arrows, because these remove the stack limit. So while the damage they deal is not very much at all, um, it's just 15,000, there's no um, percent damage at all, which means it is decreasing in power as time goes on. But to be honest, when these came out, they were so broken that uh, <laughs> they designed it quite nicely so that it downpowers with time. And I do hope they bring out screens which are um, a little stronger than them at some point in the reason near future uh, to kind of help archers because they're going to get weaker with time. But anyway, um, this removes the stack limit, so now it's not a case of 3 times the 25%. Um, in case, instead, it's a case of how fast you can attack. So let's say you have the max attack rate, which you don't in PvP, but in PvE you can have up to 6 attacks per second. So over a 3 second period, where normally you just, you'd only be able to have the 3 stack limit the whole time, over a 3 second period here, you could do 18 attacks and each of those attacks is going to uh, stack on 3 hits of this 25% and 3 hits of this 15,000 water. So um, basically you're multiplying the base damage by up to 6 times and then adding on some water damage which is then a crazy number of that, so 18 times 15,000 water and you're doing that every 3 seconds on top of your attacking. Now that's with the, f like, the, highest, ah, sorry, the, um, the highest attack rate However, basically this is just a super, super damage buff. The extra percentage chance for this extra damage, um, less significant, it does obviously add to overall damage, but like the main thing you're looking at is, uh, the main thing adding the damage is that static 15,000. So anyway, both the fire and the water ones are almost identical, 
Uh, they both do this and they're just super super powerful it's one of the reasons why fire and water are the two elements which are amazing for the class uh, you want to do uh, ultimately both of those but you you probably most archers want to go with fire and then you know they have a fire build they use scorching arrows the class works that's how it does it shadow cannon uh, this one is a bit different rather than doing a damage over time it means that it only does one hit of that so technically it has no stack limit but um, it is only doing one hit of that amount. So if you look at the um, the number, say fifteen, you know the fifteen thousand, it's basically doing one hit of that. Whereas Chilling Arrows is doing three hits of that fifteen thousand. And yeah, that twenty-four percent is kind of cool. It, it does do lots of shadow damage. However, it doubles the mana that you use. It doesn't triple the base uh, the base damage as uh, Chilling Arrows and Scorching Arrows uh, do on that. So. It's a lot worse than Chilling Arrows and Scorching Arrows, but if you've got a really heavy shadow build, then Shadow Cannon is something which you can use. Just make sure that you don't have the skill anywhere above 10 because it will do it will cost loads of mana. So the next one to go through, and these last two are, uh, well, last three are a lot shorter. Um, Falconer here, Stone Bear turns it into a tanking skill. Uh, this creates a little bear that will run out in front of you, basically like a dragon. It will go out there and tank for you and draw the attacks and all that until it dies. Um, if you have the skill high uh, level then it, the cooldown 60 seconds with the cooldown potion you, you can kind of use it frequently and it, it covers gaps uh, so yeah that's a cool PvE skill uh, quite handy for tough content then you've got the Dark Companion which I talked about earlier does the healing when it hits enemies um, pretty useful in PvP but not, not like a huge huge deal uh, the other ones, uh, they're just alternate versions of these things. You've got Divine Companion that does healing, but doesn't heal by a percent. It's just not very much of a heal. So uh, it's these two Skurins you want to focus on. Ballista here. Um, these are the two Skurins which make the skill amazing. Um, I will note that so pet damage does not use your elemental stats. So normally you would consider all the different elements and you'd use the one which would be best for the content because uh, they take you know extra damage from that element however ballista only hits a single target with each one of its attacks and the base damage if you get it to 99 is far more significant than this elemental damage that's being added on 1200% to 300% um, it's just not so much about the elemental damage so these two Skurins, Bomb Turret and Venom Turret, they turn it from attacking a single target to attacking an area, which ultimately is a lot better. It becomes really good at clearing out uh, groups of enemies, as well as hitting bosses while hitting the other enemies, because uh, Normal Ballista does have the problem that if you put it next to a boss, it starts attacking the boss, and then some other random enemies go past and it starts attacking them instead. So Bomb tur Turret and Venom Turret um, avoids all those problems and turns it uh, way better. So even when enemies are weak to water or to holy, I would still recommend using one of these two. And having both is useful because you can switch when one of them's doing half damage with its element, then you know switch the other one. Or when one's doing double damage with its element, then you know switch to the other one. That's uh, that's how it works. So not switch the other one, switch to that one. Um, anyway, frost turret is the only other one which you'd take worthy note of, and that's because it slows enemies. Um, so I think it was. Um, uh, yeah, it is the case. So it starts at one second slow, and then if you level it up, it goes to three seconds slow. So you want to level it up, um, but uh, it's just for that slow in PvP. That's that's the reason why you'd use it. Then uh, we're skipping over these three skills because they don't really have screens on them. And then we have first aid. So first aid by itself, it's quite a simple skill. Heals you by twenty percent per second for ten seconds. Then you slap the screen on it. The screen is pretty insane. What it does is, um, whenever you take any damage there's a 20% chance that you take zero damage from it and that you do an explosion around you doing some shadow damage. So this is one of the big reasons to have a shadow build right now because that shadow damage is quite significant especially when you're getting hit lots. So PvE you don't really get hit too much um, by too many hits that is. So it, it helps but it's not a huge deal. In PvP though you get hit by lots of hits a lot of the time so this is going to trigger a lot. The um, Avoiding the damage it's kind of like a 20% damage reduction, but kind of not. It just helps reduce the damage you take a bit. Um, but then this uh, shadow damage that you're dealing is going to help out if, say, there's a knight next to you attacking your loads and you can't get away, so you're just attacking in close range and you're tanking them because you've got this on and, you know, renewing mist on and all that kind of stuff going on. Um, you know, maybe Mark of Justice as well. 
uh, then the shadow damage is going to help out uh, doing doing a bit of damage there. So it's kind of cool. And the combined effect of the healing with with um, avoiding some damage uh, is very very strong. Uh, so yeah, that screwing is a is a big big good one for uh, for archers. So anyway, that concludes going through all the different scurrings uh, on all the skills. Um, I hope that was interesting. We're now going to the next section, which is to talk about um, which order you should maybe do these scurrings. So I'm going to bring this down in size a little bit just to focus your attention onto what we're looking at. So this is um, which order to do them in. So it's really up to you. I want to say that first of all, uh, do whichever choice feels most um most appropriate to you. Maybe you want to do that gold fine screw in first. Um, but I would say probably the best one to do first, well, probably is in definitely. Uh, scorching arrows is just the best screw in really. Um, scorching arrows or chilling arrows, but scorching arrows is the one freely available right now, so uh, almost everyone goes for that. They then get the fire tri stones from the shop, they level those up, and then you know, you got damage, you got the class working. So, scorching arrows, first one to do really. Next one, bomb turret or venom turret. Um, this is, well, I literally just went through this skill and talked about the Skurun. It makes it really good. Pet damage is great for new players uh, because when you haven't got elemental stats and great Skurun's going on and stuff, you're not doing a lot of damage, so the pet skills do uh, proportionally more damage. Um, so, or comparatively, anyway. Can't find my words. Um, so yeah, anyway, and otherwise this is just great Skurun. So you just need to get one of one or the other to, to get the ball rolling. Then Mark of Ignition, so I, I went on about how Mark of Justice is maybe better, but Mark of Ignition is a great damage boost, and if you're going with a fire build and stuff, then this is going to be very useful for you, uh, for killing off bosses, and otherwise fighting in PvP, killing people quickly. So, maybe doing that one next. Festive Spirit, uh, this is where we start going to sort of rounding stuff off, like those, those kind of, these first three, they do big things for the class, and then it's kind of more filling in gaps and just rounding things up. So Festive Spirit increases the slow duration, making it just work better. So um, yeah, kind of useful there. You could maybe skip that one later. I just I feel personally I would do it at this point. And then you've got the Sniper, Pierce, and Volley Skurins. Uh So that's just, like I said, rounding things off, getting the last uh, bits of the basic attack build working. And then um, after that, Shroud Guard. Now this is better than maybe uh, the Sniper, Pierce, and Volley runes. You maybe want to do Shroud Guard first, however, you need the 99 skill points to use the skill and you know if you're new and you're looking at which order to do these skill runes and like you know you're still building your character it's likely you don't have 99 skill points in in first aid so shroud guard you want to do it there but um i wanted to note it here but it's not necessarily something to do first because you're not going to be using it for a while um so anyway yeah that's their talking there now the last bit to talk about in this video um, I know we've been here a while, but um, the last bit is talking about the different elements. I want to break down element by element what the class has to offer, um, because I think that uh, while it's great looking at all these scurrions and stuff, it can be a lot to take in and you can't necessarily piece together all the different elemental bits. It's also good for me to see in the future, coming back to this and see how elements were at a particular time. Um, so we're going to go over to, uh, if I can click properly, there we go. Uh, we're going to go over to um, this page, which is, it's a thread which you can't see on the forum, where I've written something to the developers asking them to add screwins, uh, certain screwins into the game to make the elements a bit more well-rounded. Because if someone picks a light element, and then there's just not the support for a light element, they're not going to be doing as well as if someone picks fire element. And you know what you should pick for the optimum stuff, like it would be nice if all these different elements could be used and viable, and people could have different builds, you know, you actually come across people with uh, using different stuff. So anyway, we're going to go through these in order, starting with fire. So for fire, you have barbed arrows here. Oh, actually, I should probably mention first, we're not going to be talking about ballista here, because that does not um, work with your elemental stats. So no matter what build you use, this is viable, it doesn't matter. I noted it here because um, it's quite an important damage dealer, so um, it is worth, uh, worth them putting you know, other elements onto Ballista so that then um, it can be, you know, help with help them in certain bits of content. So anyway, going on to fire, we've got Barbed Arrows here, so that's um, the most important essential uh, skill covered with a really good score in. We've then got Volley, uh, Mark of Death and Ballista, oh sorry, not, <laughs> I just said I wouldn't mention that. Volley and Mark of Death, um, 
uh, you can see I've categorized this by essential, major, and secondary damage dealers. So it's got the major damage dealers here uh, covered. And then if you look at the secondary damage dealers, it's got everything except for Pierce. So Fire is just really, really nicely set up. It's got all the different screens which you, all the different sources of damage which you want. The only thing missing is Pierce, but you know, it doesn't really matter when you've got everything else. That's just a secondary damage dealer after all. So yeah, Fire is very well sorted. And if you pick with a pick fire, you are, uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're in business. Next to look at is water. So for water, again, we've got an awesome barbed arrow screwing, which pretty much sorts you by itself. Um, you're, you're in good shape there. Then we look at volley. It's got a volley here, which is actually better than the fire one. So it's, it's doing well there. Mark of death. It doesn't have a screwing for mark of death. So that's missing. And then you look at the secondary damage dealers. It's got everything except for concussive arrow which actually doesn't matter so much because Concussive Arrow is just a PvP skill, it's just for stunning. Like, it would be nice if, if you had one here to do a bit of damage, but, you know, there's Fire and Nature there. If you have either Fire or Nature in a good state, then that's fine. That you know, It doesn't matter that there's no Water Screw in there. So, actually, Water is pretty much sorted too. The only thing it's missing is Mark of Death. But, you know, it's not the end of the world. Water is definitely nicely set up. Um, I actually prefer the water setup compared to fire setup um, because while well, Mark of Death is uh, Mark of Ignition is lovely, um, you've got a better volley, and you've got the Pierce one, which I, I do like the Pierce Garoon. Um Concussive Arrow I'm not using unless I'm in PvP, so uh, well I don't really play Archer PvP. So um, yeah, water for PvE is actually set up um, as just as well, if not better, than fire is. The next element to talk about is nature. So nature does not have a barbed arrow. It has Thor's arrow, which is, is fine, like it's doing something, but it's nowhere near as good as the fire and water versions. So it's okay. Right? It, it works, but nothing that special. It's then got a really good volley. Um, it doesn't have a mark of death. Um, it's got the mark of justice there, but that doesn't do nature damage, really. And then um, across the secondary damage dealers, it's got a sniper and a concussive arrow. So it's missing shrapnel arrow, it uh, doesn't really matter there. And then pierce, uh, it's missing a pierce. So it's, it's got bits, like bits across the board, but it's got, you know, a not so good barbed arrows um, and not so good other stuff. Yeah, they're missing other gaps. So yeah, it's, it's fine, it kind of works. Um, having a nice volley is nice, but nature isn't really that great. It definitely needs a couple of bits added to it in order to work well. If you do have a high nature, then you can make the most of it with with a, volley, a good volley or you know the really good concussive arrow. Um, you can maybe maybe you'd want to do this damage over time sniper screwing, um, but uh, yeah, you're not really going to get much out of nature. The next thing to talk about is uh, light. Now light is sorely lacking. You might have noticed already if you're looking through this. Light only has Pierce and Volley. Now, to be fair, it does have one of the best Volleys, and it does have joint best Pierce, but it has nothing else. Uh, light is just an element which the, the the developers just haven't really given Light very much. They've barely given out any Light jewels as well, so Light is just a, a no-go for every class. Um, it needs a lot of things to get anywhere near viable. Um, it hasn't got a single barbed arrow screw in for it. Um, it doesn't have a damaging mark of death screw in. Uh, the ballista one is the most out of date screw in on there. Uh, but it does have one at least. And then, um, yeah, it's just missing screw ins across the board for the rest of it. No sniper at all. <laughs> um, so yeah, light is terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Do not pick it. And um, yeah, that's all I've got to say really. Next element to talk about is shadow. So shadow has a barbed arrow that's fine but nowhere near as good as the fire or water one. Um, it has I think a really out of date volley that's just not very good. Mark of death, it doesn't have a damaging one there. Um, it doesn't have a single ballista on it either. Um, shrapnel arrow and gut cast fire, you know, it's just missing stuff. It's got pierce and sniper, which is fine. Um, the sniper one's out of date, it's not, not brilliant but it, it, it works. Um, so <laughs> shadow's kind of got a few pieces. I mean, having a barbed arrow compared to light does help, but it's still not great. Um, it's it's definitely not not working well. Um, I haven't actually marked, uh, so shown uh, added. Is the right word added? I haven't added 
first aid in here with the Shroud Guard Skurin. That would be the main reason to use Shadow, is for the Shroud Guard Skurin, because that skill doesn't have any other elements on it. So if you have Shadow, say, as a supporting element, then there are bits you can get from it. So let's say you went for Fire and Shadow, then you could have the, the best, but or uh, the best, basically the best, Barbed Arrows, um, a reasonable volley. Uh, you could use this Mark of Death, uh, the Mark of Ignition, uh, for damage there if you want it. Um, you've then got these other bits here, but you, this missing bit in Pierce, you've got the Shadow one here. Um, and then you've got the, the Shroud Guard screw in there. So Fire and Shadow does cover everything very nicely. Um, but uh, those Shadow bits are not like a huge key thing that's adding into it. Um, so anyway, that's around, uh, talking about all the elements there, rounding things off. There's nothing uh, more I want to add to this video. Uh, if there is, check out the description because I'll add it there or in comments below. Uh, but anyway, thanks very much for watching. I hope this is giving you all the information that you'd like to know about Skurins on Archer, uh, the way elements are and all that kind of stuff. Um, next I'll be doing the night videos, uh, going through the skills and then doing the builds video and then their skill runes video. Um, that will round off this series. Then I'll move on to PvP stuff. Now the last thing I want to mention is in this is that uh, the reason why well, is I've taken a while doing these videos. I'm sorry for that. I've had various delays. But um, this video is coming out now and over the next few days I'm going to be releasing lots of Neo Monsters uh, videos, PvP videos from that because there's been a community tournament and I said I'd happily host um, some people's videos where they don't have a YouTube channel they could send their video to me and then I'll post it. So there'll be lots of that coming out. Don't panic, there will be King's Road videos coming out um, in the in the near future after that. So anyway, if you stuck around to the end of this video um, because you're passionate about my channel, then you will hear that and hopefully then you won't be panicking. Um, thanks very much for watching. I will see you in the next one soon.